Hi, loves. It's Allie. I am so honored for today. Back with Awakening with Allie. I just, I feel so empowered by these guests I've had on already. And today is another incredible woman. I met her through Amelia Love. And this show is just all about awakening to your gifts, to so much more than you've ever been told you are. And I don't want anyone to ever feel alone in this journey. And so that's what this is just all about. And so I, I'm really excited for this beautiful and fabulous woman inside and out. I have the beautiful Jennifer Edwards, and I want to tell you guys a little bit about her. So Jennifer Edwards is an on mission to help women deepen the relationship they have with themselves, cultivating high value inside, clearing subconscious patterns and traumas that are ready to shift. She is a healer, priestess, spiritual architect, and coach to women who have struggled to deeply love themselves, be open and vulnerable. She has created effective online programs, grown her Instagram to nearly 20,000, and has garnered over 2,500 subscribers on YouTube, all organically. She mixes practical, well-established protocols with quantum methodologies to create amazing results. Utilizing her tools and practices, she creates extraordinary results in her life and her the lives and businesses of her clients. Jennifer, thank you so much for being here on Awakening with Allie. Yay, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. Yeah, we connected through Amelia Love. We got to um, give a little backstory to the audience. Um, so we're recording this um, in uh, early January. It's January 12th. Uh, this show isn't releasing until 2 22 because I felt that was just divinely guided. Um, so I'm, you know, bringing on all these amazing um, guests beforehand. And Jennifer and I connected through Amelia Love, who's a mutual friend and just an incredible woman in this space. And we did a um, sound healing and just incredible journey and healing journey. And Jennifer and I connected and I just felt immediately aligned with her and I asked her to be here. So Jennifer, before we get into all the amazingness that you're doing now, why don't you just share a little bit about kind of, you know, yourself, where you kind of started, how you awakened, because I think it's so powerful and magical to get to hear others awakening journeys because no one's is the same. <laughs> You know, right? They are all different. Um, yeah, so I have I was raised in Christianity. So I was raised in a very strict religious uh, upbringing. and um, I am definitely grateful for that because it grounded me in faith and belief in God. And I have always had that connection, that spiritual connection. And <laughs> I was like, the kid that, that loved God, you know? And then as I grew up, there were, okay, so we all have wounds. And so I had a lot of wounds around relationships, um, relationships with men and relationships with money. And there are very, this very similar energy around both of those. And I desired success. I desired it because I had a belief that if I was successful and I had enough money, then I would be out of pain. So my core belief was that men and money caused me pain. So if I had a good relationship and I had plenty of money, I wouldn't be in pain. When I was 32 years old, I, I married a wealthy man and it was the most painful six years of my life. And so I had the man and I had the money. And I had a lot of abuse and I had a lot of just a really, really painful journey. And I had already began to question my spiritual beliefs when I got into relationship with this man. And this man was quite a bit older than me and had a PhD in spiritual counseling from the, from the university of metaphysics. And so he had, and he also had Tony Robbins background. He was like with Tony when Tony first started. So he had NLP, like he knew how to manipulate. He had all of that down. And so combined with those, he was very controlling. And so I started to learn about the esoteric new age spirituality world when I was with him. Um, but it wasn't until I left that marriage, I left that marriage in December of 2013. I went through a divorce all the year of 2014. Um, I went through my divorce and it was at that time that I started to kind of wake up 
I dove straight into Tony Robbins. I went to Fiji um, to Life and Wealth Mastery. It was kind of like my first like jump inside. And then I just started going to all of these events. I went to UPW. I went to a date with destiny. I went to business mastery. I like, I went to everything I could go to. And I went to multiple times. I like went to 13 events in one year Wow, with Tony. Yeah. And that, those were a lot of fun. Um, and very transformative, but there was still an element in Tony's world where you could hide because the events are so big and you can hide. And you don't have to really, really get vulnerable or show yourself. And that was me. So I wasn't really changing, but I was kind of changing, but I wanted to change and I wanted success because again, I thought that if I had success, I would be out of pain. And I had a lot of self-worth issues. So I joined the, the mastermind, the platinum partners mastermind. And I felt like the least successful person in that mastermind, all these people, you know, had built incredible businesses. So I felt very, um, underwhelmed. I felt very like not worthy of being there. Um, I didn't earn this. This was money that I used from my divorce to pay for this. You know, it's like all this stuff going through my head around my deservedness and worthiness at that point in time, this was 2014 and 15. Wow. And yeah. And so Tony does a lot of spiritual work behind the scenes. So people only see like the big guy out front, but he's actually very, very spiritual behind the scenes. And he has this whole team of people that follows him around the world that works on his body, that spiritually advises him that, you know, has, you know, plays all these parts. And one of the, the a couple of the spiritual players um, is a guy named Donnie, Donnie Epstein and a guy named John Amara. And I connected in with them and I started doing work with Donnie. And so I knew of Donnie's work. So Donnie created this thing called uh, network spinal analysis. And it's a chiropractic adjustment where he doesn't even like touch your spine. He just sends energy up your leg or up your spine from the tailbone or from the top of the head or from the wrist. And you like, it's an orgasmic experience. Like that's the only way I can wow. describe it. Like your body's contorting and your back is contorting and you know, it, it, you like pass out, like it's just this like energy flow up and down. And so I got into that and I was living in St. Louis at the time. And my cousin came to visit me and she's like, yeah, I'm going to go see this chiropractor. That's like really weird. He doesn't even touch you, but he's like, does this thing. And, and she's describing this. And I'm like, what? There's a chiropractor in St. Louis that does this. And she was like, yeah, you know about this? I'm like, yeah, who is this person I must know? And it was a guy named Dr. Phil Myers. And I started working with him and I worked with him for a year and a half straight um, every single week. And that was like, that was like my spiritual, like cathartic, where it really got real for me. My life stopped. Like I was um, traveling a lot and everything stopped. And I just had to sit in St. Louis and really just heal. And that's kind of like what started my spiritual journey it was 2016, really. Wow. So there were yeah. like a few different moments where obviously you were tapping in and you were kind of like you said wanting the transformation but it wasn't necessarily happening you weren't necessarily actually evolving though you wanted it you were just kind of like in it but weren't actually allowing yourself to shift and then what once you went through this energetic exchange that's when you started to really feel the shifts and actually notice the changes and then essentially decide to allow yourself to sit instead of just traveling and being all over the place. It was like, I'm going to exactly. surrender in a way and, and, and yeah. hear and be in the moment. Yeah. You know, it, it is a, it's a deep surrender. And, um, it, it's funny how we can, we can look at our lives. And one of the things that I've struggled with so, so, so much was my self-esteem and my self-worth and my self-love. And I feel like a lot of women do. I was going to say, I feel like Almost every woman does at some point mm -hmm. in their lives, yeah. fortunately. I know, yeah. I know I have for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just had zero confidence in myself and zero confidence in my ability to create anything or do anything or be successful or whatever. And one of the things that I realized is that 
I was approaching being successful from the wrong place. It was from a fully entitled selfish place. Instead of a place of like, I have this gift and I want to share it with the world. It was a very entitled, like the world owes me. I deserve this. I need this. That really bratty child, like manner and way of going about it. And this is actually a recent understanding of my shadow of this entitlement mentality is a very recent understanding of my shadow. It's a, it's, it's a shadow that I am currently pulling out and shining light on. And it sucks. You know, it really does suck to sit in your shadow because the shadow is the part of yourself that you're like, I don't want to see that. Like nobody wants to see themselves as an entitled little bitch. And yet this is showing itself to me. And I'm like, Oh, okay. I get to love myself. Like I'm at a place now where I do truly love myself. I get to love myself in this really icky, gross, ugly shadow. And, um, I feel like that is really, that's really the spiritual journey. This is like, what are these things inside that need to come out to light so that the light can shine on them so that the light of love can come in and alchemize alchemy is a transformation of energy. The light of love can come in and alchemize this and transform this into something that you can really use to your, to your benefit, to, to grow, to transform, to help other people, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact that you even just shared, like you're still going through it and you're still working through that shadow, I think Mm -hmm. is so incredible of you to do, because I think like so many that are awakening or just kind of starting to do this work, they think it's something that you just go through quickly and it's over. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. This is like a journey. I mean, same with me, you know, like there's so many shadows I'm still working (laughs) through. There's so much work I'm still doing and aware of. And you're right. Like to sit in your shit as I said, (laughs) sucks. Like, you know, nobody wants to sit in their shit. Like, but then it's like, when you do, like you said, and you can love yourself through it and you can go through it Mm -hmm. so much alchemizes and so much transmutes and you're able to get, you know, to those higher levels, but it's, it is hard. And I mean, that's why I think so many choose, you know, not to, well, at least till now, not to awaken because they don't want to do the shadow work. That was me for so long. I was the same way. I wanted to be, you know, in the ego and, and when I was styling and all these things, and I deserve this because I'm this and da, 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 you know, and, and it was like such a just selfish and not good place to be. And right. when I started looking at all that, especially when I became a mom was like, when all my shadow work really began, it was like, holy yeah. crap, like, what do you want to teach your daughter? You know? And like, what do you, you know, like, what are you doing? And like, you know, how are you going to show up in the world now? And it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> here we go. You know? And it was like really, really dark. So I, I, you know, not only is that amazing that you share that, but I think it's incredible that you're so aware and you're working through all that and like able to share that. Cause I'm sure that helps so many. It, it is. And it's like, it's one of those things where you've got to keep asking the question of like, what is going on? What's my block here? Why am I not transforming past this place? Why do I not feel magical? Why do I not feel like, like things are really coming together? And you just, you keep asking that question, but when you ask it from a place of victim consciousness, you're going to get a victim response. But when you ask that question of, I want to know because I'm really, I'm ready to take full responsibility for this. I'm ready to sit in this and I'm ready to say, okay, I'm responsible for this. I'm responsible for everything that I've created. This is like a huge part of, um, of the work too, is responsibility, personal responsibility. Can you sit in a personal responsibility of what it is you've created? The life that you've created, the mistakes that you have made, the shit that you have done that have, has gotten you to this point where you're like, this is no longer acceptable, but how do I change it? And my old modality was to tackle it like from that masculine energy, but to tackle it from a place of like, I just need to get this done. I just need to, if I was just making this much money on a, in a month, I would be totally fine. If, if God would just send me the, this many clients, I would be good. God, why aren't you sending me these many clients? Like, I don't understand why I keep getting the same blah, 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 blah. Like this, just that victim consciousness of complaining and staying in that cycle. And it just perpetuates and creates this world that we don't want to experience. Meanwhile, we're trying so hard to create this amazing world. We're trying so hard to manifest and like 
be these, these, um, you know, these magical women, which there's so much magic that does live inside of us, but we block that magic when we're in that victim entitled consciousness. And yeah, like when I look back over the evolution of my business, I started my business three years ago, talking to twin flames and sharing about the twin flame journey, which is this toxic dynamic between people really is what it boils down to. And I had uh, gone through that in 2018 and started to learn about it. So in 2019, I started to share and it was January, 2019. I, I had nothing. I had no following on Instagram. I had no following on, so on, on YouTube. And I just started sharing and I made up this course called sovereign soul and I put it together and I started marketing it and I had five people show up, I had five people join that course with like, and I had no background, nothing. And every single week I created the course as we went along, like <laughs> I did it pre-created, I created it every single week. And I was in this mentality of comparing myself to these other coaches why don't I have 10 people? Why don't I have 20 people? Why don't, why don't my master classes have a hundred signups? Why don't I let la, 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 la. And I was caught up in that mentality of this isn't good enough. It was never enough. It was never good enough. And my business plateaued and stayed at a, a very same level for years. And it's like, it's just now coming to this awareness of like, just how deeply seated this entitled mentality has been inside of me and how I have got to sit in the personal responsibility of it. Because what happens is when you're in these shadow aspects and you're creating from the shadow, then you start to form beliefs that this is my reality and this is how I create and this is what's true for me. And then you start to doubt any other thing and then you're not able to create in this higher level of consciousness, because you're so stuck in all the stories and the cesspool of what it is that you created. And I'm in the process of like pulling myself out of all of that right now and looking at my work instead of why slave driving myself, basically, why aren't people showing up to this is a gift and whoever I get to give it to, I'm blessed to give it to. I love that. I think that's such a great way of viewing it because we all have, like you said, so much magic inside of us. Like we are of God, we are of source, we are creators of the creator. Yeah. And yeah. when we can actually tap into that and be, you know, so grateful and, and know, like I am giving this gift instead of like you said, like I deserve this or why haven't I had this many or what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, and unfortunately so much of it, right. is programming so much of society has told us you have to be on a certain grind, climb a certain ladder, have a certain success story. And so that's why we have all these limiting beliefs, you know, around like, oh, well then why am I not at this level? And why is this not happening for me? And right, right. I realized that too, you know, and, and I think 2020 for so many people was that, you know, awakening because of such a pause and it was like, oh, wait. Yeah. I don't have to do all of these things to like actually be happy yeah. and actually be successful, you know? And it, it was like, I mean, I mean, I know for me, at least it was a big like slap in the face. Like, you know, it was like, whoa, I thought the shadow work was heavy when I first, you know, had my first daughter, you know, in 2018 and then 2020 hit and it was like, boom, here it is again. Yeah, you know, <gasps> yeah I know. Yeah. That, that is what has happened with the world is people have had to really sit in their stuff, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, which we've never done, right? Like for the most part, as a collective, mm -hmm. we don't haven't had the time to do that because we're always on a grind. We're always on the hamster wheel, go, 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 whether it's you know, like you said, traveling or at events or mindlessly with distractions on you know the phone. I mean, the list goes on. And myself yeah. too, like I realized how much time I gave to like everything. And like now I'm so much more mindful and like aware of like, oh, I've been on my phone for a little while longer. I'm going to get off in 10 minutes. I'm not going to sit yeah. here and mindlessly scroll for two yeah. hours for no reason, you know, and like exactly. all these, yeah. And all these distractions that we know, um, you know, those who are awake and understand that a lot of these distractions are designed to distract for a reason to distract you from you so that you don't yeah. sit in your shit and you don't do the shadow work and you don't work towards being that magical, you know, being that you just discussed, you know, because you can't, yeah. if you're distracted all the time. 
Exactly. Exactly. It's so true. And like, we have an obligation to this planet and to this world to get to the bottom of all this stuff and to pull it out. And if you are on this awakening journey and your soul is meant to be um, on this leading edge in your lifetime, you're going to have stuff come in your, into your life. That's going to trigger you. You're going to have desires that, you know, your desires are placed in you by the divine. And I believe that you're meant to have them, but there's, it's also kind of like a carrot that the universe or God source creator uses to get you to do the work. It's like, okay, you want to create this. You want to have this amazing relationship. Okay. Well, go heal these things about yourself. And then the relationship can come, or you may be the kind of person who heals better inside relationships than you do single. So the shitty relationship come, and then you're like in this dynamic of like, this is like sucks and it's so toxic and you're trying to pull yourself out of it and you can't, and you keep coming back to it like a rubber band. It just keeps drawing you back in over and over and over again, but it's meant to help you heal. And then once you heal and you release it, then you can be released from the relationship and you can go to another level in relationship where you're tr attracting a more aligned partner in that is may not so triggering and, and is a more um, a loving aligned place because you've graduated to that place. Oh, I love that. You graduated to that place. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah. And I mean, you know, Jennifer, in your awakening journey, like, as you said, it kind of started early and then it kind of flowed and then continued and then really picked up after you discovered kind of this energetic work. Like, what was it like for you to realize that you were kind of awakening? Like, how would you describe it for you personally? Because of course it's different for everyone, but I feel like mm -hmm. so many people I've connected with, you know, on social media and like my blog and so many places that I've just like been like, I just feel like I'm going crazy or like everything doesn't make sense anymore. And, you know, and it's like, yeah, it kind of does feel like that, but but what was it like for you when you started really stepping into that and realizing like that was what was happening? So uh, my, the main <laughs> time frame was the last seven years from 2014 to today. And um, so I went through these different experiences where I thought that I was in a level of depth that is, is nowhere near where I'm at now, right? So like 2015, I thought I was deep. And I look back to 2015 version of me. I'm like, eh, no, <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> it's okay. And one of the things that I want to say is that when you find shadow, you have to just forgive yourself for, you know, you're human and beating yourself up over it is not going to help you just be in that space of forgiveness. So anyway, 2016 was whenever I worked extensively with Dr. Phil and um, I, I went through starting to pull uh, a lot of the really low density out. I had a lot of anger inside of me. And so I had my twin flame at that point in time, and he would come into my life and trigger the shit out of me. I would be so angry. I would just like leave his presence, just seething in anger. And it wasn't anger because of him. It was anger from my past lives, from my childhood, from all the stuff that I took on as an empath and a highly sensitive being took on all this stuff. And so I was angry from that. And so I started healing that with him and he started moving that out of my body. I started to deal with that in 2017. I actually started, I worked, I used to travel for my work. So we did seminars all over the country. So I would get on a plane on a Thursday, be gone uh, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, get on a plane Sunday night or Monday morning and do it all over again every single week. And I traveled that year. I tra I think I did 52 events. I traveled like 140 something thousand miles wow. that year I flew. So that year, I look back to that year thinking I was so spiritually advanced and had done all this inner work, you know, and this goes back to the entitlement mentality of like, I've done all this spiritual work. I've done all these Tony Robbins events and I've done Alison Armstrong and I've done this and I've done that and I've, you know, all this stuff. And I look back to that version of me and I used to complain all the time. Like this event's not good enough. This is, I'm not making enough money. And this is, da, 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 you know, whatever. So I look back at that time. And then in 2019 was when I started my business 
And that's when my face would hit the floor a lot because I was failing over and over and over again. Um, I was just like coming up short financially. I, I was having all kinds of financial problems, falling behind financially, like just money was not flowing at all. And it didn't matter what I did. Like, I, I mean, I, I've taken Amanda Francis's course. I've taken Melanie Ann Lair's courses. I took, I took them all and still could not get past these money programs that I had. So money has been a big teacher for me. The lack of money has been an incredible teacher for me because it has brought me to my knees. It has brought me to the floor. It has brought me to fetal positions of just being incredibly scared of how I'm going to pay my bills. And when you don't have a paycheck every week and you don't know where it's coming or when it's coming again, you like can get into fear really easily. And so I just began to really hit my knees in God. And that was 2019 was really when um, the deep cathartic spiritual transformation started to take place because I had to like start to pull myself out of my ego. And, you know, and, and then I get to this place of 2022, where I'm seeing these aspects of my shadows still kind of like lingering and coming in because, you know, one of the things that I do is I'm always asking, what's the lesson? What's the teaching? What am I meant to understand? So like, if money is not flowing, I'm like, okay, what's the lesson? What's the teaching? What's, what am I meant to understand here? Be, and I know now not to get into fear. I know now to sit with it and ask, what's it, what's this trying to tell me? Cause it's always trying to tell you something whatever it is in your life, it's always trying to tell you something. It's always marrying something to you. And so getting into like my spiritual journey was just, mine didn't like some people's happen like that. And it happens very fast. Like I have a client that I'm working with right now and his spiritual awakening has been like, boom, like oh, that he slammed <laughs> him. I know. Yeah. But I don't know because he has struggled because he's like, oh, like what is happening? Yeah. Like it has really, really been so hard for his body to process it because he's like, wait a second, I'm a computer programmer. And now all of a sudden I'm like, I, I, like this is happening. Like what is going on? You know? Um, and so I've had to really hold this man. And it's so crazy because also I have a lot of programs around men and I have men step into my world all the time for me to coach and hold. And I'm like, this is also teaching me mm -hmm. um, in a spiritual way where it's a non-sexual relationship with a man. And I am having to hold this energy in this container for him. And so this is also part of my spiritual growth as well, because this is an area that I've had to heal with is trusting men and and being okay with men because I had so yeah. such deep hurt and pain from them. Wow. Yeah. No, I understand as far as the, um, well, first off money for sure. I understand because it's funny. Like when I was like in the ego and I was in my styling and all of that, it was like, no matter what I was getting job after job, client after client, whatever, after celebrity. And it was just like happening like all the time. And then like, when I stepped away from all of that, everything like slowed down for a minute. And I was like, huh, why is that happening? Like what's going on? You know? And that was when I started to sit in my shadow work. And that was like, when everything started to like really slow. And like you said, like I had to look at these like lessons and like understand them and take a step back. But then on top of that, like my awakening went from being like kind of little tidbits to like, boom, when 2020 hit. And so I feel for him because I went through the same thing. It was like, who the fuck am I? What's happening? Like, yes, yeah. You know, like, like what's going on? Why can I not like just stay in the mode of like wanting to style and yeah. to like do all the things I used to do? And like, why don't I want to be on my social media anymore when I was to live on social media? Like what is going on? And it like seriously tripped me out. Like I was like, what is going on? What is wrong with me? Like why, you know? So I, and that's again, why I felt so guided with this show, you know, like God really told me that, you know, I was going to be doing this podcast and, and then gave me the name and everything, because 
I think so many are having that what the fuck moment right now, right? Yes. And they don't even yeah. know like what to do with the shadow, like you said, mm-hmm. and they don't even know to ask those questions. Like, why are things not flowing? Why are things not happening? And like, I, I'm coming from victim consciousness. I don't even know I'm doing that, you know, and like right. all this stuff. And so it's like, it's so intense. And then obviously it's just easier to go back to sleep and be like, oh, I'll just pretend like none of this is happening. And like, yeah. but the, the funny thing is that I realized when I tried to pretend it wasn't happening, it just came at me like 10 times more. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's exactly what does happen. Exactly what happens. I mean, that, that's what I saw in my uh, clients of uh, twin flame. So they would be so triggered with their twin flame and they try to run and like completely disconnect from the twin flame. And then they would just be bombarded with like signs and synchronicities. Uh, no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere. You're going to sit in this and you're going to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. yeah. It's wild. So for you, like you said, like you, obviously it took some time for you to go through all those different things, but then like from 2019 to like now, really, I guess for you coming back to your relationship with God fully Mm -hmm. helped you Mm -hmm. further awaken and be guided and, you know, given so many tools. So now in 2022, where you're really led, you know, by God and you're realizing how much of your journey and your awakening is all through that, like yeah. Where are you now? And like explain kind of like what you're, you know, what you're doing and more of kind of the work for others to mm-hmm. understand, you know, kind of when you get to this point, what this mm-hmm. looks like. Yeah. So it's really, it's an interesting swing because I started to go back to church, which the kind of church that I was raised in um, about six months ago. And I'm like, huh. I, I actually, I went to uh, see a baby dedication and my little cousin was getting dedicated to God in church. And so I went to this church and this was back in June. And I was like, hmm, I kind of like this. That was kind of good. And I just kind of banked it. And then a couple of weeks later, or maybe, maybe three weeks later, my aunt asked me, do you want to go with us to church? And I was like, you know, I think I will. I think I'll check that out again. So I did. I went again and I was like, huh, that was pretty good. Like, cause the pe- the pre- preacher talks about magic and miracles of God. And I was just like, wow, this is like kind of, it, like, re- it resonates. Yeah. yeah it resonated. And I was like, huh. So then I started to kind of like go and I started to get all this really good stuff from going And so that has been one thing that I have come back to. That's really wild. I never thought I would ever go back to church and here I am back in church and it's like, and I listen to praise and worship music and I love it. And it just lights my soul up and it lights me up. And I, I heal actually like I'm, I'm a healer and I, I will heal with praise and worship music. So I'll, I'll be like calling in my angels and calling in source creator God and calling in all this stuff. And I'm like, you know, laying the energetic body in front of me of the person that I'm healing. And I got praise and worship music going, you know, like this is taboo stuff. And I still drop F-bombs. Like what (laughs) is this, you know? So it's like, I still drop F-bombs. I heal, you know, I I pull tarot cards and I I get readings and, and I do readings and I'm like, but I'm going to church. Like it's, it's kind of like a crazy dichotomy, but it's like, it works for me. Yeah. And I feel like this is what God is trying to do with all of us is do what works for you with me. Like, like you are all (laughs) individuals created so individually. And so, but yet you're one, it doesn't have to be this one way, you know? No, I love that you said that because I agree with you. And I also, by the way, love that you brought up church because it's funny. I was actually just saying to my husband the other night, I was like, I want to find a church now that we moved to Tennessee from California. I'm like, I want to find a church, you know, here, but like, I want to find a church that's spirit fills, not like religious. Are you in Nashville? Like. I'm right outside of Nashville. Yeah. Oh, no way. I'm like three hours from there. So I'm going to be coming oh, down there. Oh, I'm like, telling you, I Yeah. So, and so I said, my husband, I was like, I don't know why, but lately now that you're saying this, this is like my own confirmation. Like I literally said to him, I was like, lately I've been having this feeling like 
I mm. want to go to church and like, I, I want to go like experience, but I really want a spirit filled church because I was raised, you know, as a Catholic and I went to church, you know, my whole life, you know, raised and CCD in the whole nine yards. And I hated it, honestly. Like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had such a hard time. I fought with like half the nuns. Like I was always like in trouble. Like it was just like, I never got along. I questioned so much. Like there was just so much stuff, but I always loved God. And I always had a relationship and it wasn't until I really lost my relationship with God back in 2013, my grandmother passed away. And like, I was so angry. And then I got involved with Hollywood and everything else. And I like, just went completely dark and like, had like no interest in anything God. But now, you know, after going through all of my own traumas and awakening, like, I have now very much like, cleaned up that, you know, version of myself and come back to God so much more strongly than I ever had before in my life. And now like completely are led by that. And now it's so funny that you say that about church, because I'm like, I've been having this feeling and like this tug, yeah. but I yeah. haven't been able to find like, you know, spirit filled yet. I'm still like, you know, asking around and looking for recommendations because, it, you know, I just don't want to go back to like what I, well, sure. you know what I mean, from yeah. like, as a young kid, because that's what it pushed me away. I didn't like exactly. the constant rules and like, mm -hmm. you must do this in order to be this. And I agree with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. God, the creator source, like wants us to be individually ourselves. And I love that you said that, that you're like, I still do all of these things, but like I go to mm -hmm. church and like, God is, you know, is my everything, you know? And it's like, it should be able to be that way. You shouldn't have to only do this in yeah. order to be, you know? And so it's, it's just so fascinating. You, you know, you said that. So share a little bit about like, you know, what you're doing in your coaching work, you know, how it kind of works when you work with you, how you decided to kind of create this course and everything that, you know, like you're, that you've been doing, you know, because obviously it's uh, so needed right now in this space, you know, yeah. when people awakening and going through their own spiritual journeys. Yeah. So I, um, I ha I've done a lot of interpersonal development work myself. So I had a lot of like tools, you know, this, this helps you do shadow work. This helps you understand blah, blah, blah. So I had all these tools and, um, my most recent course that I've created is called the pattern. And it's really looking at the patterns of our lives. Like, how are we, because we have a tendency to be very habitual. How are we thinking, feeling, saying things, doing things that are creating the outer world that we're experiencing? The outer world's always a reflection of what's going on on the inside. So if you don't like your outer world, then it's something on the inside to shift. And so the pattern is about finding those patterns of ways of thinking, saying what you say to yourself every day, how you're thinking every day, how you're showing up every day, how to like identify them. Cause that's like the biggest thing is identifying what the pattern even is. Cause we don't realize that we're operating by a pattern until we get really conscious. So bringing that pattern to the conscious awareness and then begin to shift it. And I use different modalities to shift the energy and the way, the reason why a course is so good is because you're doing it with other people and you're holding yourself as well as other people accountable. So you're showing up every day in the space of like, this is my intention. This is what I want to transform. This is what I'm seeing in myself. This is what I'm celebrating about myself. This is what I'm moving and, 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 and shifting about myself. And so you're sharing this in, with this intimate group of people and it helps to solidify your transformation. And so that is the healing work that, you know, that I do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And, um, I do also alchemy healing, which is the energetic healing. It's like sending the energy in the, in the body and, um, to, and really like pulling out old energy. So we have karma and agreements, so clear karma and agreements. We have beings, which are souls without a body attached. They get into all aspects of ourselves. And we have these channels claircognizant, clairvoyance, clairsentience, and clair uh, audience channels that get clogged. And so then we can't hear our own soul's information. And what we have to do is clear those channels out so the soul's information can get through so that we're following the guidance of our soul instead of the guidance of our ego. And so that's the work that I do is clearing out these things, you know, placing, we have crystals all throughout our body as well. So activating crystals and repairing the crystals and just like clearing stuff out, putting designs in the body to help uh, raise the frequency of you. Frequency is everything. Like frequency is 
anytime the body is diseased, it's in low frequency. So the whole, the whole objective, the, the objective, even to anti-aging. So we, we have been approaching our world with these, these tools that help us anti-age, right? So we have creams for our face and we have Botox and we have fillers and we have all this stuff. But then when we elevate to a certain level of frequency, we automatically are turning back the hands of time on the way that we look and the way that we feel. And we can reverse age. Like we can take wrinkles out of our skin. We can take gray hair out of our, out of our hair because the higher in frequency that you go, the less density the body's trying to carry and keep up with. And so that's the whole objective is to go up in frequency. That's what my work does. That's so amazing. Well, when you were speaking to like the crystals in your body, can you mm-hmm. explain that a little bit more? Cause I, I obviously know a little bit about that, but for anyone that maybe doesn't like, how would you explain that? And then maybe you could also further share about like just being in a higher frequency, of course, I think people are at least aware of like, if they walk Mm -hmm. into a room and they don't feel good about something or something feels low energy or low density, Mm -hmm. but that is a part of a frequency. But can you like further go into that for someone who maybe Mm -hmm. is still trying to figure out like what that might be? Because I've said to so many people who aren't even, you know, fully awake to this, like, Hey, at the end of the day, like we are all energy, everything is energy. So if you actually like tap into that and start to like realize that everything is energy, you really do start to shift the way you see things and the way that you take things on. Yeah, you do. You do. Yeah. So we have, okay. So everybody knows about the chakras. I think at this point, um, anybody in the, in the spiritual world, like that's one of the, the foundational information that you get is the chakra system. And so you've got your root, um, all the way up your, your spine to your crown and every single one of these chakras has a crystal but your whole entire body is gridded in crystals. So you have them in all of your endocrine um, system, your glands, you know, your, your uh, hypothalamus gland, your, um, your pineal gland, pineal gland, however you want to say it, uh, your whole glandular system, your throat gland, your uh, thyroid gland, uh, hy- your thalamus gland, which is like just at your sternum. Um, by the way, the sternum, your thalamus gland is the spark plug to your entire nervous system. So anytime you're in flight or flight, you just want to start tapping on your, your sternum right between like, not just like right above your breast, you just start breathing deeply and start tapping on that. It starts to bring your nervous system down and it just like starts to calm you. And so you have crystals there, you have crystals all through your arms, through your legs and knees. So like the, the ones in your knees are associated or connected to your clairvoyance channels. Your clairvoyance is your clear seeing, your God seeing. Your clear audience is your clear hearing, your God hearing. Your clear cognizance is your God knowing. And your clear uh, sentience is your God feeling. And so we have channels of God feeling in our belly. And they kind of like surround your belly button and they're like satellites and they get turned out whenever you walk into a room and you start taking in everybody's information. This is why you start to get really, um, you start to get really anxious when you walk into a room as an empath. And so you have to turn those, you know, just a simple request, God, I'm feeling anxious, turn my clear sentient channels back in, please. So turning those clear sentient channels back in and really, um, you know, just repairing these crystals that are all throughout the body. Um, and then frequency. So there's a book called power versus force. I teach, I I used to teach from this a lot and I got some, a different download around it, but I, it's still a really good visual. So in the book, Power Versus Force, it's written by David Hawkins. He's a really amazing, prolific writer for consciousness, higher consciousness. Transcending Consciousness is one of his books. Um, Surrender is one of his books. Um, So, you know, just like really, really amazing information came through this man. He was way ahead of his time. And he created the scale of consciousness. And it's called a map of consciousness. You can actually Google map of consciousness and it'll come up and and you'll see it. It's a rainbow color and it starts the lowest level of consciousness or, or feeling vibration the body can hold 
is deprivation. It's not even on that scale. But the next lowest is shame. And then the next lowest is guilt. We have been programmed through our religious programming, through our schools, through our all kinds of stuff. And my ears are ringing. So it's like something's coming in. Um, we've been programmed <clears throat> in shame and guilt. And so most people are hanging out in shame and guilt. And this is what has perpetuated what we've seen over the last two years of people complying with what has been happening because they're in the shame and guilt frequency. So this is why we can't make these people wrong or bad or whatever. And this is why I'm really cognizant of not calling them sheeple or names like that because they're just responding to their programming and to what is already in their body. They literally cannot help it. And so <clears throat> these two lowest frequencies. So the idea is as you move your energy up the scale, you come to a place of neutrality. Then a, a, and anything below the line of neutrality is weak forced energy. So anytime you're in guilt and shame and fear, depression, um, unhappiness, unworthiness, all of those things, you're in forced energy. It's a weak and you've got to force your way there. Anytime you're above the line of neutrality, you're in strong power energy. This is the power versus force. So you're in power, strong energy. You're in your strength. So this is happiness, love, bliss, pleasure, play, um, all of those types of, of emotions. Now, when you're going up and down the scale, so this scale is presented as a hierarchy. So it's like, well, if you fall into the lower part of the scale, then you're in this lower area. But I, I had this thing come through me where it's like, it's not about a hierarchy or a linear scale. It's, you can, you can flow back and forth between weak and power. And the higher you carry your frequency, the more you stay in power energy. And so you can dip into fear, you can dip into, um, you know, so like my entitlement mentality, like that, uh, that I'm working through, like that's a very low frequency. It's a low, but for the most part, I'm in a very high frequency. I've done a lot of work on this. And so I mostly carry a high frequency. I mostly carry a happy, blissful frequency. But then whenever I look at the shadow, I'm like, huh, okay, that's entitlement. That is a low frequency. And so the idea is not skipping from, I, I, it's very difficult to go from entitlement all the way back up to happiness and bliss. But what I can feel is what's the next level up. The next level up would be, feel like relief. What if I felt like just relief in my body? Whew. Like, just, like just saying the word relief automatically, I, I felt my solar plexus just kind of like on hinge you know, and open up a little bit. And so that's the idea is as you're going up in frequency and you're feeling these feelings of fear, because a lot of fear has been pulp, uh, it, uh, pumped into the collective consciousness. And so people can really get stuck in fear. What's, what's, a, what's an emotion or a feeling that's just a little bit better than fear? And so you want to let the energy flow through the body and move the, the fear out. And like one of the things that I teach my people that come to me is that I just have this imaginary dry erase board. And when the feelings of fear come in, I'm like, no, 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 I don't accept that as truth. And I throw that on the imaginary dry erase board and I erase it, dissolve it. And I do it over and over and over again until it's gone. And then once it's gone, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't come back. It doesn't hook into you anymore. And this is one of the ways that you can start to raise your frequency is when these fear programs come in, you say, no, that's not my truth. Throw it on the dry erase board, erase it. Wow. That's really powerful. Mm -hmm. I, I love that you gave that, you know, that, that visual, because I think for so many people that um, are obviously in a state of fear, like you said, and the collective is very much pumped and pumped with fear for almost two years now, mm -hmm. you know, it's a hard place for them to go. Right. I, I realize this too, within even my own family and friends and all those people around me that it's so hard to help them go from that lower frequency you speak of to just a fast high frequency. Yeah, so talking awesome. about it, right. So like you talking about it in a place of like, okay, let's, what's just the next level of getting out of that. Mm -hmm. And then knowing like, okay, from there I can go up 
is a mm-hmm. whole different, you mm-hmm. know, experience. And, mm-hmm. you know, I also appreciate that you said about, you know, that they're not being able to really control it. And they're working from these programs because, you know, look, I'm so guilty of, you know, the sheeple or, you know, the brainwash or what's wrong or all of these things. Because, you know, when you're awakened, it's so hard to look at things and be like, how do you not see that? Like, how is that not clear as day to you? But then I realized when I was talking to a friend of mine about this the other day, who's recently awakened, I said, you know, it's almost like they have the wool pulled over their eyes. Like we're seeing it with like God's eyes, God's heart, God's ears. And then these people that are, we know and love are seeing it somehow with this like total blindfold over them. And they're not even like computing what's going on. Right. It's exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it's uh, what I have seen is most people that are really buying into the fear porn of this are people completely disconnected from God. And then but there's a lot of people who are in the church and who are connected to God who are also disconnected from what's really going on. And they play into the other side of it. The other side being like, I don't want to say his name, but DT, you know, like playing into like, this is going to be everyone's savior. And like, if we don't elect all these people, then we're going to lose our democracy or whatever. And so that is just the other side of fear. And I see that a lot in church people and people who are in the spiritual realm. So the spiritual realm and the the non-spiritual realm are both holding two opposites of fear. And then the rest of us who are actually popping open and awakening are kind of like in the middle holding this like balance to this collective consciousness And the thing with frequency is that the frequency of fear lands at about 75 or 125. I can't remember what it is on the scale, but the frequency of love lands at 500. So the more of us that are in love is far overpowers, you know, it takes millions upon billions upon billions of people to be in fear. And it takes only a small collective to be in love for it to even be greater than the fear. And so that is the, that's the reason why so many of us are awakening is because we need to activate more love on the planet and more love on the planet is letting go of judgment of self first, because when you can let go of judgment of self first, then you can let go of judgment of others. And so that's why the shadow work is so important. So it's like, okay, this entitlement stuff showed itself to me in myself. And I could easily sit here and judge myself for being entitled and entitled little B. And I can easily beat myself up over all of the mistakes that I've made over the last three years. I could be so much further along and I could have so much blah, blah, blah. And yet I have to sit here and say, but you know what? I love myself anyway. And I forgive myself for being in this and, you know, God help me to see a way out of this. Help me to help me to see what I'm meant to see here so that I can live more fully in my faith and trust in God, my faith and trust in myself, my higher self, and release this energy that had, has gotten on me in some way, whether it's from a past life or from this life or culmination of both. Yeah, that's, that's so beautifully said. And I agree with you. It's like, we do see more and more that are coming into that space of love and just more compassion. The more you do notice more and more people are starting to question, the more you do notice people are starting to awaken more and, and see something's off with the narrative, something's not being told truthful, you know, and, and, you know, I mean, you, I know you said like your ears were ringing. I'm just curious, were you getting like downloads, like, for the collectives, I know you do like readings and, and things like that. Were you getting like certain downloads or were you being given anything when we were having our conversation? Um, it was just coming in as truth. Like it was just coming in as like, this is what you're meant to share right now is in, in truth. So um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was getting. Well, and I think, you know, to that point, like we are being called to speak our truths, you know, in the collective Mm -hmm. and like, instead of being afraid and being in fear, like you said, and that low frequency, like stepping up into our truths, knowing what our own truths are and speaking to them, wherever that may be. And knowing that like, that is our truth, you know, as much as others may not 
agree with it as much as others may say that's crazy or you've been labeled a conspiracy theorist a million times. Yeah. Like, it's just understanding like that this is my truth. This is where I am and, and knowing you're meant to share it. Yeah, exactly. And like one of the biggest things <clears throat> is that most women, especially really suffer from having a blocked throat chakra because we have, we have been silenced for so many millennia and for thousands of years, women have been silenced on this planet and, you know, and through our incarnations, we have probably very likely been killed or imprisoned for speaking truth and for speaking our mind. And, um, we have been put down and, and we have not been honored and so we form this energetic block in the throat. And that's one of the things that I, you know, it's interesting because you have these predispositions for things and you have gifts and your gift is meant to be unwrapped. And so I was a person who, like when I was married to my ex-husband, he was a speaker and I could not speak. Like he spoke for me. I could not speak. I could not speak in front of people. I did not have a gift of art at, at that point in time. I'd not developed a gift of articulation. Um, I was very painfully shy and backwards. And um, I was just, I was just very inhibited in my throat. And because of my desire to create something successful of my life, I've pushed myself. So the first time I ever did a Facebook live, I sat with my phone in my hand for probably like three minutes before I could even push live. When I first started doing YouTube videos, it took me hours upon hours upon hours because I would like, it would take me so long to get it right because I would be recording and I'd have to stop and I'd start all over or I'd have to edit. And I mean, it would just take me so long. And now I've gotten to the point where, I mean, clearly I can articulate and I can just riff because I have this trust in myself and I have this trust in my voice because it is my gift. It is a gift of mine that, that I have been given in this lifetime. And so it's, it's something for us to unwrap. It's something for us to look at what is inside of us that God has given us that we are supposed to free up for many of us women. It is the throat chakra. And, and even if you have a blocked throat chakra, you may not be called to speak or you may not be called to be you know, um, podcasting or whatever, but there's still a truth inside of you that has to come out right now. Yeah, that's so powerful. And it's funny you say that because when you were saying that I was like tapping on my throat, because I've been told that several times. And I've mm -hmm. also been told that I'm clairvoyant, like as far as one of my gifts is that like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to share and speak my truth and, you know, really activate that. And that mm -hmm. I've been like keeping that down for so long because of like you said, the different lower frequencies of yeah. shame and guilt and judgment and, you know, everything else. And it's so interesting, like when I started to release more of that and to let go of those beliefs and, and speak, I noticed like my throat would feel that much lighter. And I noticed also like sometimes I would get them the ringing right after or like, you know, vibrations in my throat. And then sometimes even like my throat would get like kind of scratchy. Like it was this like confirmation of what was supposed to come out. And mm -hmm. it's, it, it's so interesting. And, and you're right. Like there is so much of that where, you know, especially women, like you said, have been, you know, silenced, um, you know, for wanting to speak their truths or haven't been able to. And so it's like now, especially now in the collective where there are so many lies and so much propaganda and so much happening, like we're being called to step up and speak our truth. Yeah. And, you know, something that just came to me is that the, the higher you go in frequency and the more that you go along this path, if you, as the further along you go, if you deny or push down or push away that which you are supposed to step into, the more life will hit you harder. So for example, I didn't speak my truth to some per to a person last fall and it unraveled in this really ugly way. And it was because I knew something that I needed to speak and I didn't speak it. I, mm -hmm. My intuition said, speak it. My intuition said, this is what's happening. You need to say something. And you could say something very kindly. You could say something in a very loving way in a non-accusatory way. But I did not speak it. I pushed it down. And then it started, it like festered. And then something else happened. And then something else happened. And then I still wasn't speaking it. And I still was holding it in. So then finally, I spoke a little bit of it. 
because I like got up the nerve to speak a little bit of it. So then it like further unraveled into this like really gross, ugly thing. And it, it came to a culmination a couple of weeks ago where I was in my ego. So I hadn't spoken my truth. I hadn't spoken it to this person. I, and I had only spoken a little bit to this person and I got really massively triggered. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go on a trip. And I, I booked a flight and within 24 hours, I came down with some kind of something. I don't know. I had a hundred degree fever for four days. Wow. And I had to sit on my couch for four days and sit in my stuff and go, look at what you did because you did not speak your truth when you were told to speak your truth and follow your intuition when you were told to follow your intuition in that moment. And so the higher that you go, the more life slaps you when you don't do it. So that's the thing to be aware of is like, you've got to be speaking your truth. You've got to be following the intuition and internal guidance that God has given you, because this is where we're going. Like we're going to a more telepathic way of being where, where it doesn't make sense. It's not, we're going to 5d consciousness on a 3d planet. And so we have got to quelch the fear and also step into this faith and trust in ourselves and our knowing. So like the, the most important, um, channel to clear first and foremost is the channel of clear cognizance of that knowing of hearing your soul's information and following it. Wow. Yeah. And I love you said that too, about, you know, listening to your intuition and trusting in it. You know, that's mm -hmm. something that I felt like it is as a young girl, I did. And then the world told me not to. So I stopped yes. and I was, and I shut it down for a very long time. And not until again, basically motherhood, did I start really trusting my intuition so much so that so much was questioned of me of like, well, how do you know? And you're not, you know, listening to anyone and you're not doing, you know, talking to this expert. And, and I was like, no, I just, I know, like in my soul, mm -hmm. I know. And at first I felt crazy for that. But now I realize, like, no, God is giving me this as my own intuition, my own knowing. And, you know, I need to tap into that. And yeah. The more I trust in my intuition, the more I trust in my gut, the more I realize how much more I see like, wow, that's exactly what I was meant to be doing, or that's exactly what I was meant to be learning or whatever, you know, it may be. And I, and I also, you know, agree with you in saying that like the collective is being called to do that too, to stop yeah. trusting the outside and the outside noise and sources and everything going on and to trust within themselves and ask themselves okay. like, what their answers are, you know, yeah. and stop listening to, you know, the quote unquote powers of be or whatever you want to call them that are, you know, telling us how to live our lives, what to do, you know, how to be and, and, and the list goes on of the control, you know, and right. take step back and being like, okay, does this sit right with me? You know, when you were talking about frequency, I said to someone online the other day, cause they came at me attacking me, proposing something about, you know, not complying and stay close to, you know, they messaged me and they were like, you're part of the problem and blah, 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 blah. And I said, well, let me just ask you a question. I said, before you even like come at me, I said, when you read something like that, I said, do you trigger because you don't like that I'm saying it? Or do you trigger because it shakes everything that you know? And they were like, well, it's everything that we're being told. And I was like, right. So everything that you think, you know, basically. And mm -hmm. they were just like, well, yeah. And they didn't really have much to say. And I said, well, just know that's part of a program that mm -hmm. like we've all been given that I've stepped out of that's now triggering you because you can't see that you're in a program and like no judgment because I was in that program too, you know? Mm -hmm. And they just kind of like sat there and like was like typing, but like not sending it. And then the next message was interesting approach. I don't really know how I feel about that, which is fine. At least I planted a seed. Mm -hmm. Um, and then my next question to them was, let me just ask you a question, regardless of you feel I'm right or wrong. When you see these different things in the news and you read these different articles about everything going on with the sea and everything else, what do you feel? Do you feel good? Do you feel like high frequency or do you feel low? Do you feel bad? Do you feel low density, low frequency, sad, scared, depressed? Mm -hmm. The list goes on. And the only thing I wrote back was sad, you know, and I, and I said, so all I'll say to you, we don't have to agree with anything I posted, but just think about that. 
that every time you choose to turn on the news, you choose to listen to what's going on. You're putting mm-hmm. yourself in that frequency. And then I was like, God bless. Cause then they were just going on a tangent, but mm-hmm. it was just, it's just interesting. Even people who are not maybe awakened yet to this, yeah. they yeah. know that the frequency is not right yet. They continue to put themselves in it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are people that cannot perceive it yet. They, like you were saying earlier, there's like wool over their eyes and they truly cannot perceive it. I mean, my sister is one and she can't see it. She can't see through it. And, um, you know, and have friends, I have very dear friends. I've known them for years and they're amazing people and I love them. And I think they're so great yet politically we're very divided. And on this issue, we're very divided and, um, it has definitely affected our friendship and it is really fascinating because they're very intelligent people. Like they're amazing people. It doesn't and, really like, like, like sit, feel crazy when you realize I have the same thing with family and mm-hmm. friends and people around me. They're super intelligent and they're like super book smart and all these things. And I'm like, yeah. how do you not see it? But what you were saying earlier, that mm-hmm. connection to God, that connection to source, it's like, if yeah. you're missing that for most mm-hmm. people, that's yeah. where the disconnect is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so that, so here's what I, here's what I see is that people put their faith and trust in something. So if they say they're agnostic or they're atheist, they're still putting their faith and trust in something. They, what I have seen in the, over the last two years is that the people who have said that they are atheist and agnostic actually put their faith and trust in the science and in the government. And so they just oh, replace Lord Fauci, God, <laughs> right? Or Fauci. Yeah. So they replace God as the source of energy with their God is the government and what is going on and, and, you know, doing the right thing for your neighbor bullshit, the cult, the cult of science, science. Exactly. Really. Exactly. It's all complete bullshit because once you step into this relationship with source and God and yourself, then you know that it has like, they're just appealing to someone's lower nature. Meaning they, meaning, um, you know, the government Fauci and, you know, the media and all of that stuff, they're appealing to people's lower nature, the lower nature of guilt and shame, do it for your neighbor, do it for your old woman in your family, do it for your kids, do it for your pets, do it for whatever else. And so these people have good hearts and they're like, yeah, I want to, I want to be, you know, a good citizen. I want to, and this is why like calling people names is not helping the situation Because these people truly, I feel that most of these people truly have good intentions and a good heart. But because they don't have that connection with God, they're not seeing through this veil that has been erected. Like there's literally an energetic veil that if you are completely stuck in the 3D, you cannot see through it. Wow. So... Yeah. And, and, but at the same time, for those of us who have awakened or continuing to awaken and be in this ascension process, mm-hmm. it's like the veil for me, at least just keeps lifting and lifting and lifting. And I feel like it just keeps getting thinner and thinner. And I'm like, whoa, where's the veil? I feel like there is. No veil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's so wild, you know? And then, so then you talked about, you know, that, you know, that 3d aspect of where essentially we are in our world, we are in a 3d world, but we are mm-hmm. headed to 5d consciousness. I feel like mm-hmm. most people obviously know that it's, most people have spoken about this, but for those who maybe don't, or even your own personal, you know, perspective of it, what does that mean to you? And like, where do you feel from your own intuitive stance or even, you know, your own like reading of the collective, where do you feel like that is going in the near future? So I feel like, okay, this is why inner work is the most important thing that you can do right now is like clearing out these shadows because the 3D world has had a protective layer around it, meaning that you, we could not instantly manifest before. Um, There was this protective layer and this massive lag time, LAG time between thought intention and creation. And that time is shortening. So time is not linear as we have perceived it. Time is cyclical. And so we hit time in uh, different manners. So time, the time it takes for us to have a thought, think a thought, have an intention and create is much shorter. And so our job right now has to be alchemizing fear in the body 
on repeat. I mean, we've, we're just being bombarded by fear so that we can alchemize fear over and over and over again. And anybody not able to alchemize that fear is going to have to leave the planet. They're going to get off because their body will not be able to sustain the energetic frequency that the planet is going to. And so that's why the inner work right now is so important because you have to be able to look at fear for what it really is. So when I have a money fear, I have to, I have to look at it for where is it at in my body? Why am I feeling it? What am I feeling here? You know, and this is why I'm always asking questions like, okay, what's the, what's the lesson? What's the teaching? What am I meant to understand? And then what comes through, like I had a session with somebody yesterday, a healer of mine. And so I'm having all of this stuff come to my awareness. Now it's all coming up. It's all like, this is why the entitlement thing came up for me today. I'm like, Oh, this is interesting. It's because I, I, I jogged a bunch of stuff yesterday in my healing. So I'm always in the healing work, but I, um, I have this masterclass. It's, it's available for free and I can like give it, give you yeah, guys give the, it to me. I'll put it in the show notes. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys can like download it, but, um, I have this, I have these 10 questions that I ask that work myself through a shadow and it, it's a very, it's in a very specific order. And the, the questions are written in a very specific way for me to bring it up to my conscious awareness so that whenever I have a fear come up, because like I, right now I'm having fears come up around stuff and I'm like, okay, this is interesting. I've got to sit down. And I got to move through these fears, you know, and, and also the thing that I'm doing is softening because I was in very, very strong masculine energy, toxic masculine energy for a very long time in my life. And we could do a whole show on masculine feminine energy, <laughs> but um, yeah, I was in very masculine energy in my achiever mode. Like I've got to achieve, achieve, achieve. And so I was pushing, pushing, pushing. I've been it's there. Very masculine. <laughs> yeah. It's a very masculine energy. So I am in this process of softening back into my feminine and having a balance between these two. And so, you know, as I am, as I'm getting downloads around this entitlement, one of the aspects of softening into it is forgiveness, but softening into what am I making all this stuff mean? And why, you know, why do I feel like I have to have this? And why do I feel like I have to have this? What if I just let go? What if I just was like happy and, and, and satisfied and, and, you know, and all of the, you know, just, there's so many layers to our healing that we get to peel back. Yeah. It's like an onion, right? You just keep peeling. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. I'm like, I'm constantly peeling back all the layers on myself. Just peel, 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 peel. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, when you were saying about, you know, doing that inner work, you know, I agree with you. It's so important right now for people to sit in their own shadow and, and do the work. And if they can't do it on their own to then find someone who can yeah. help them, you know, to be able to do it, to be able to step into it, to guide them, to move through it without that shame, without, you know, the guilt and judgment mm-hmm. and all of it, and just be able to move it. And like you said, I love that you said, you know, love yourself through it and not yeah. have judgment. I've definitely had to, it's been a process for me when <laughs> I pick things up. I'm like, okay, I have to love myself through this. Okay. You know, it's yeah. like, it's not easy. You know, you, you, yeah. look at and you're like, Ooh, why did I do that? Like, yeah. you know, and it's like, okay, but at that same time, we're only human. And there's so many programs that have been around us. Like you said, from school, from work, from society. I mean, the list goes on that. It's like, yeah, yeah it's been in you like that, you know, <laughs> you can't help it. You know, it's like, yeah. but now it's like that you see it. How do you move past it? And that's essentially, would you say kind of the move from the 3D to the 5D consciousness when you essentially do that work and you choose to move in that yes. and evolve and allow your consciousness to ascend? Yes, exactly. It is. It is. Um, it's being able to dance with your shadow. It's being able to dance with yourself mm-hmm. and uh, to take personal responsibility and to really love yourself and to have this connection with source and through all of that, you're able to ground yourself in because this is the balance. You've got to still be able to ground it into this 3d because the 3d is not going anywhere. Like it's always going to be here. We're always going to have the material because this is what this planet is. It's the material world. Right. And so we're always going to have this material and we're always going to have, you know, um, but it's just going to be accelerated. It's just going to be faster. And so 
the faster and the higher that we can go in frequency, the more that we can dance between the 3D and the 5D world. And because somebody isn't in the 5D world does not make them less than. It just, it makes them just on their journey <clears throat> and at a different point on their journey. And that's what we have to remember is to have consciousness of compassion and patience for people for where they're at. Right, because not everyone is on this awakening journey. Mm -mm, no. No, not everyone so, is. So, so what do you think, you know, going with like the collective and everything that's going on? Like, what do you think when knowing like not everyone's on this awakening journey, so to say, and they're choosing not to wake up or they can't see things the way others see it? Like mm -hmm. what, is, what happens in the collective? Because I feel like so many people are trying to <laughs> wake other people up. They're trying to say, you know, hey, look at this or, you know, pay attention to that or whatever it may be. I know I have, um, you know, I know. Have. <laughs> you know, I mean, I feel like that's I, I, most people's reflexes when they start to wake up is like, who else can I wake up around me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, who else sees this so I don't feel crazy? Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you think in your perspective um, is going to kind of play out as things go on and with the collective and, you know, as more fear is trying to be pushed into, you know, everything going on and manipulation, the control that's been going on? Yeah, I, I really don't know. Like I was saying earlier, the, the frequency of fear is like, I can't remember if it's 75 or 125. Um, maybe it's 75. I think you're right. I think it's 75. Yeah. Okay. So the frequency of fear is 75 and the frequency of love is 500. So that's quite a difference. And it's not that far on the scale. Like it's not that far from each other on the scale. It's just the frequency of it, the emotion, the feeling. So love is a frequency, not, not necessarily an emotion that you experience with another person. It is a frequency that you embody, that you carry inside of you. And it's a frequency of the Christ where you can look at somebody through the eyes of love, through the eyes of patience and compassion and, and um, healing and, and all of that. And so as we transcend all of the lies, like the lies. Okay. That's one of the things coming to fruition is the truth. Okay. So the truth cannot be held down anymore. So the truth has been able to be held down for many, many centuries, millennia actually. And people have gotten away with lying, but because of the energetic frequency of the planet, the truth is the only thing that's prevailing. And the narratives, the false narratives, the lie narratives, and this is, this is true for the micro and the macro. So the lies about yourself that you tell yourself are also falling away. They're falling apart. You're like looking at them, you know, like just like with my entitlement lie, like that whole lie is now going to fall apart. That whole entire string of narrative that I have had in my body that I have had stuck in me is now going to fall apart because I'm going to sit here for the next few days and I'm literally going to tear it apart. I'm going to take it out of me. I'm going to transform it. I'm going to transmute it. And so as we're doing more and more of this work, the truth is going to come to, to the head and more and more people are going to wake up. More and more people are going to come to this place of neutrality. We can at least get to neutrality. And then from neutrality, they're in more power. They're in more of their their um they're in the more their power energy, strong energy. And from that place, they start to open up and perceive, well, I've been lied to. Well, uh, what other lies have been told to me? You know, and for a lot of people, it's going to be hard to accept that they've been lied to because they've got to accept that they followed this narrative for two years and they did all the things right. They followed all the rules. I mean, this just goes into, look at people, like look at what we've been told about education, get a good job, like get an education go to college, go in debt, get a good job, you know, work at this job for X number of years, retire, and then live the rest of your life out. That is all a freaking lie. And we see that now because so many people feel so like, as you awaken, you can't sit in a nine to five job anymore. It's not about getting to retirement anymore. It's not about just going to work and putting in your hours and getting a paycheck anymore. It becomes something more, something more inside of you that wants to be birthed. And so 
not though like those all of those things are collapsing because they don't work in this 5d reality and so what i see happening is more and more people just awakening to like i want more like this doesn't feel good to me and people that absolutely can't awaken to it are going to leave yeah it's interesting i've i've heard that as well from different people that you know that they can't hold essentially the higher vibration of where things are going they'll mm-hmm. choose to exit out their their physical body will choose to exit out because they're not going to be able to hold the frequency of where the overall collective is going. And I do agree with you. I think that the truth obviously has been held down for a very long time. We can see that in many ways, especially with all these narratives and everything going on. And, you know, it's getting really obvious that the the truth is rising up and it's just now that things are trying to be covered up, but there is no covering it up. It's like becoming more and more, almost like nothing makes sense. Even friends of mine who aren't awake have even said to me like, oh, you know, I did all these things and I I still got sick. And, and now I don't understand why I still have to wear this because I'm go, you know, I did all this stuff and they're starting to question like, but I did everything. And now they're telling me none of this works. Yeah. So I don't understand, you know, and it's like, okay. So it's, it's just very interesting, I guess, to watch the other side of things and, and see, like you said, these narratives collapse. And when you've seen, like from you and me and other people who have been more awakened to this, have seen this coming for the last two years. I've seen the narratives yeah. that were there and knew something was off, you know? Yeah. And my own husband said, you know, when they, you know, shut down the world and it was like, you know, two weeks so the spread, spread and we were in California, of course, you know, he was like, it'll never be two weeks. You know, I was like, they're never yeah. going to close down in two weeks. I you know. know. And yeah. so it's just, you know, and here we are, right? Almost at two years and, and, you know, it's still two weeks to slow the spread, you know? So it's just, yeah. it's so it's so fascinating. And I love getting to hear other people's perspectives on the way they look at this, because I think everybody looks at this differently, right? Especially the awakened ones. And mm-hmm. I think, especially even in this community, it's so important to be able to share those different ways of looking at things, because like you said at the beginning of the show, like, we are all on different journeys in this and we all have different perspectives, but it doesn't mean that it's wrong. It's just, we're all in seeing things in a different yes. way, but we are yes. still one consciousness. So we have to have that, you know, oneness, which obviously we've been kept from for so long for obvious reasons. So exactly. yeah, exactly. And that's what the, is going to unfold um, for people over the next few years. You know, there's going to be a push for this, you know, new world order. And then there's also going to be the evolution of consciousness because there's no stopping it. And so there is going to be like this, you know, almost like tribulation. They they talk about that in the Bible, about this tribulation. There is going to be like this, this aspect of tribulation. I don't think it's going to be as described um, in the Bible, but because I feel like what hap- what was written in the Bible was actually written by the people who are activating the new world order. So what they do is they put this stuff in the, in the collective consciousness. So then people start to believe it and feel it and, and be scared about it. And so then it actually creates, right? So they put stuff in our text as prophecy years and years ago, because this is like, this is a multi-millennial process. Like there is an intelligence that's on this planet that has been on this planet for many, many multiple millennia that has been trying to run this planet. Like now we're getting into conspiracy theory stuff where we can't prove this kind of stuff, but there has been an intelligence on this planet for a very long time. And this intelligence has been passed down and passed down and passed down in this specific lineage. And this specific lineage is what is trying to control the world right now and usher in and cultivate this new world order. And so these prophecies that were written thousands of years ago were written specifically so that people in a collective consciousness way would be afraid and they would co-create the reality of the tribulation. Okay. I don't believe that it's going to be created that way. And the reason why is because more of us are waking up faster than what they can keep up with because they didn't, what this intelligence who's, which is on the planet didn't understand was how fast this awakening was going to take place. And they didn't understand the level of frequency that we could go to as fast as we could. 
Yeah. It's so fascinating you say that. Cause like, I've also even read about how like so many, you know, books that, you know, were with the Bible didn't even make it to the Bible that like actually were supposed to be like exactly. in books for people to mm-hmm. read and all these chapters have been removed. And yeah, it's so, it's so interesting when you think about that. And then when you were saying too, about how, you know, um, things manifest. I mean, we're learning more and more now, right. That like our words have so much power, even though we've been told yeah. that wasn't true. Like they're actually is frequency all of our words. You know, like I tell my husband, even with like debts, you know, I'm like, let's use the word bounces and let's say like, you know, more money coming in than going out and like all these yes. things, you know, half the time he looks at me and he wants to roll his eyes and, you know, shake me. But I, you know, like try to tell him like, you know, words have power, you know, the more yeah. power you give to them, whether it's positive, you know, or negative, the more you're going to switch that frequency one way or another, you know, and so exactly. you saying that about, you know, them putting those kinds of things in there and wanting you to essentially mm-hmm. manifest it and create it in that fear, it actually makes yeah. sense. Yeah, that's exactly why it's been done. It, it's been done in multiple religions. It, you know, religion has been a conduit for fear. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's why I was so against religion for so long because it's been a conduit for fear. And then I, I started going to this church and I'm like, oh, okay, they're not, they're not pumping fear into their congregation. This is good. Yeah, it's interesting. I've mm-hmm. been noticing too, there's definitely a, um, a, a split between the churches for sure. You've got the churches mm-hmm. who probably are just paid off at this point that are just pushing the narratives and the agendas and everything else going on. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. you've got the ones like you're speaking to that are actually speaking truth and are actually mm-hmm. like helping awaken people and, you yeah. know, sharing what they're feeling and what God's giving them. And, you know, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's very interesting in that respect too. Yeah. And I agree with yeah. you. And I think that's why people have um, also stayed out of the churches. Cause I know for me as well, like, you know, I didn't want to be a part of the the rules of religion and being told what's quote unquote right and wrong and, you know, judged and all these things. And you're right when you, yeah. when you step away from that and find a church that doesn't do that. And is just going to share with you, like what you're already speaking to, which is like yeah. your own knowing your own intuition is just going to enable that. That's just going to further the awakening. So yeah, exactly. Really interesting. Yeah. 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 So powerful. Well, thank you for sharing, you know, so much of your journey and, and everything that you've been doing. I'll put everything in the show notes, but tell us where we can find you, you know, follow you if someone does want to work with you, you know, all of the, the stuff that you've been, you know, cultivating and creating and, and if they want to work with you for their shadows or whatever it may be, um, it'll yeah. all be in the show notes, but go ahead and tell us where we can find you. Yeah. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been a great conversation and I'm so grateful. And, um, I'm grateful to your audience and to those who are going to be listening and, and working on their awakening. Um, so Jen Edwards is my name and I spell it with two N's J E N N Edwards. And so on Instagram, I'm Jen Edwards official on YouTube. I'm Jen Edwards. And, um, my website is Jen Edwards.net. Okay. And so from there, you can find all of my, my coaching, my programs, um, the pattern is the, the, the program that I'm currently offering. Um, I'll be enrolling, you know, when this goes live at some point, whenever this goes live, I'll be enrolling for uh, whatever the next round is. So, um, and that is all about um, your shadow work and patterns and, and identifying your patterns and moving through them. And, you know, just like me, having this pattern come up around entitlement, it's just like shocking. I'm like, oh, wow, I've done so much work. What is this? <laughs> easy, but I get to humble myself and I get to sit in it and I get to really, really take responsibility for what it has created in my life. And I get to, to use these modalities that I use to move it out. And so I teach you how to do that. And you take these tools, like once I teach you these tools, you take them and you just keep using them and you use them on repeat over and over and over again. And the more that the more shadow that you move out of your body, the more shadow you shine light on, the higher in frequency you go, that is essentially how you go up in frequency is you turn shadow into light on repeat and you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, looking at yourself and and doing it. So that is the pattern. And that's what that's all about. I love that. Taking your shadow into light on repeat. I think that's so powerful. Mm -hmm. Well, all that'll be in the show notes, Jen. Thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your light and your own awakening journey and everything you're doing. It's so incredible and so powerful. And I think 
so needed at this time. And for all those listening, thank you so much for being here and being a light worker in this time. And I hope that it makes you feel less alone in what you are going through and know that there are millions more going through this too. And we are all, you know, essentially as a collective as one, as Jen said, you know, we're one consciousness. So know that and and be of that. Thanks, Jen. Thank you.